Welcome to the BSS with No Secrets podcast. And this is another episode which I run with experts from around Europe and around the globe. And today my special guest is... Hi. Hi, Victor. Thank you. My name is uh, Laura. I'm the head of business services and ICT team over here at Invest Lithuania. It's so great to see and talk to you. It's been a while. Oh, definitely. It's been a while and I don't even recall when we met last time, but it was quite a long time already. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Um, Laura, you are the head of GBS and ICT team within Invest Lithuania. And it looks like this is one of the industries which became within the last decade very important for Lithuania. Can you just... Uh, in few words say how it is positioned next to any other of the industries which are present or coming to Lithuania and how this industry looks now for the moment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, talking about the importance of the industry in general, over here in Lithuania, uh, we have uh, half of our organization working for investment attraction, so around 50 people. And within that uh, part of organization, we have four teams. So there's a team working on life sciences, which is one of our key areas, one team working on manufacturing, uh, one team working on you know tech projects with fintech and game development. And we have a separate team that is focusing solely on attracting GBS projects and helping those you know large companies to settle their either GBS or ICT centers over here, either Vilnius and Konas or, or in Klaipeda. These would be the typical locations. So throughout, especially maybe last 10 years when the industry just started to grow, uh, it's, it's been a very interesting journey. Uh, now the industry accounts for around one and a half percent of the total GDP in the country, which I think having in mind that it came a bit later over here to Lithuania compared to let's say, Poland or Hungary, that's, that's a great achievement. And uh, last year we saw growth of around 14 percent in terms of employment. Again, I think very much at par to uh, a lot of uh, mature locations in Central Eastern Europe. Up, and we're uh, edging towards that 20,000 employee mark in the industry. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of the key areas in Lithuania in general, in terms of you know how the government treats, in terms of various programs that are being developed for uh, this industry in particular. And we feel that at least for the next five to 10 years, this is the industry where a lot of attention, both from the government, but also from the private sector is going to be directed to. Okay, we'll go through all those elements in a moment. Uh, but one of the reasons, and I need to mention it now uh, of our call, is that you have recently released a very interesting report. You are releasing it every year since five, six years already, if I'm uh, if I'm not wrong. And uh, it covers all of the important data. There is a little bit of marketing of Lithuania, but a lot of data uh, focused about the industry. And it looks like that within the last uh, 10 years, you are growing like 12 to even 15 percent year to year so it's like whoa it's, it's just growing uh, rapidly and uh, i did even a small exercise today in the morning and i did compare the numbers between poland and lithuania uh, when it comes to the number of employment versus all of the uh, inhabitants of the countries and you know what in lithuania it's 0.75 percent in poland mm -hmm. it's 0.84 so it's nearly the same when it comes to the relation of employees um, employed within the GBS, BPO, BSS industry versus the total number of inhabitants. So it's it's really, really impressive. We are nearly on the same level, I, I must say. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely getting up there. And as you rightly mentioned, uh, this report, which is Lithuania's business services report, as we call it, uh, it's our sixth edition. So we started way back, I don't know, when, uh, half a decade ago, when we just kind of started to dig into the industry and we understood that we kind of lacked generally the knowledge you know and all the data that was necessary for projects coming into lithuania so we uh, conducted our first survey those six years ago i think the uh, initial report was maybe 
uh, eight pages long. Now we have over 50. I think that also talks to, you know, how much not only the general, uh, the industry itself grew, but also understanding and, and know the data and the insights that we have about the industry over here in Lithuania developed. So, uh, yeah, as you rightly mentioned, we have a lot of data here all you know uh, typical bits and pieces about the functions about you know the locations where the companies uh, come from about the language split but also about the wages wage growth uh, real estate situation so all those kind of elements that any uh, center that would like to benchmark themselves uh, would need to know or the new company that is still looking into Lithuania as a potential location would kind of like to tick off within their uh, business case so maybe let's start from the very beginning. So from the investors, where from where do they come from when it comes to the settle setting down the operation centers in in Lithuania? Uh, because as all across the Europe, uh, most probably the the most significant player I I are US. But who are the others? Yeah. So. Uh, over here in Lithuania, the situation is pretty much similar that U.S. is the leading force, so it accounts for around 35% of total employment. And in fact, this uh, share has been growing throughout the years as well. So only last year, it grew by five percentage points. But maybe what uh, makes Lithuania stand out a little bit compared to, let's say, Poland or Hungary is that we have a significant presence of Nordic companies over here in Lithuania. So uh, in total, they account, uh, the whole region accounts for around 40% of total employment with Denmark being the, the largest uh, country over here. So um, yeah, very strong um, a representation of especially the financial sector from the Nordic countries, but also kind of uh, increasing the whole variety through IT and manufacturing as well. We have also seen an increased attention from German companies over the last couple of years. So we had a couple of new names uh, like Nordzucker, for example, settling in Konas. So those that are just starting to adopt GBS model would be looking for those kind of new, maybe less saturated locations. And, and they're pretty uh, confident, you know, kind of venture out more to the north and to the east uh, for, for those kind of still growing location so it's also very exciting that we're kind of expanding the horizon of uh, gps representation over here and this, the, the main reason of it is rather the short distance to nordics or this is um, knowing the languages or there are some other elements which push the the investors from nordics and germany to locate uh, their business in lithuania yeah, I think it's it's a mix of all of those elements. So initially, I think for the Nordic companies, uh, the physical proximity. So, for example, Vilnius is only one hour flight away from Stockholm, so we can pretty much fly in here, have the whole day of meetings, and fly back. Uh, that was just very very convenient. Uh, but also the language mix. So uh, Lithuania is one of the few locations in, in Europe where you can find a, a larger con concentration of Nordic speakers over here. So it's mostly Lithuanians who went to, let's say, study to Nordic countries, which is very, very popular over here and came back with the language knowledge. Uh, but also this kind of harder to measure uh, cultural factors were very important. So generally Nordic brands are very well perceived in Lithuania. People do want to be part of that kind of Nordic culture, so to say. So uh, employees are naturally kind of drawn to those companies, uh, but also just work ethics and work style, kind of cooperative teamwork uh, focus, uh, work culture, I think something that made a lot of Nordic companies feel very much at home over here. You mentioned Vilnius, and and yes, as the capital is the main uh, target, let's say for the operation centers. Uh, I remember when I was in 2016 in visiting uh, Vilnius. Then at that time, I think it was. Uh, 95% of all of the investments at that time located in that city. But already at that time, Kaunas was appearing on the market. But now it, those are not only those two cities. There are more destinations which are visible for the industry. Yeah, that's very much true. So um, Kaunas itself had a kind of a... Uh, a little renaissance, if you want to say so, over the last couple of years. It's going to be European uh, 
capital of culture in 2022. So there's a lot of general new development in terms of social infrastructure and, you know, uh, overall view of the city and how much, for example, services are provided in English. I think that was also a helping factor. We had a couple of really large manufacturing companies from Germany coming over to Konas. And we also had a couple of um, high level uh, m and deals. So one of Lithuanian startups was bought by Oracle. So now they have kind of a cybersecurity based in Konas and another long term software development partner, Lithuanian partner was uh, bought by the Saw Systems, a huge French company. So um, through these kind of bits and pieces, uh, the Konas profile did, uh, did rise quite a bit. Uh, another location that is is still uh, in the very very early steps of development, I would say, would be Klaipeda, which is the port city. So it is really rich in terms of logistics talents. If you need to talk anything, you know, maritime and so on, it's a, it's a great location. And uh, I'm sure you would uh, agree that in general, you know, supply chain and and similar uh, functions are really on the rise. So we know locations like Tansk, who kind of has a strong presence there. And we feel that uh, with all the talent is there, multilingual talent in Klaipa, that it could be the kind of uh, another interesting location to discover for, uh, for companies that might be looking into that sort of talent in particular. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. And to be honest, I am very much, uh, how to say that, surprised? No, surprise is not a, a good wording, but those cities who are the capitals of uh, culture, as we mentioned it, they become really in the interest of the business as well. We had the same in Wroclaw when, when Wroclaw was the capital of culture. I was last year in Plovdiv in Bulgaria where there was exactly the same. And that's amazing that um, uh, actually the, the BSS industry is choosing those destinations. It's like being closer to, to, to that fact. That's just a surprise. Okay, uh, Laura, let's focus maybe on the type of um, services which are being provided by the GBS or SSC or the BPO centers in um, uh, Lithuania. Uh, is there any uh, way to group them somehow to, to see that there are, for, for example, financial ones or IT ones, or there are so many of them that you cannot group in, in a specific, let's say, folder? So, yeah, uh, I think if you really want, you can group anything, you know, in life. So the same goes for, for function. So in Lithuania, uh, around a third of uh, all the uh, labor force when it comes to GBS work and IT. So this would be, you know, software development specialists in particular, uh, QA, uh, cloud operations are very much on, on the growth now. Uh, cybersecurity would be also part of uh, part of that function, and of course, you know, service desk and so on. So it has uh, been the kind of function uh, which kind of started the industry, and it's still the the leading one in Lithuania. The second most popular would be customer operations. So again, due to the fact that Lithuania is general uh, very uh, multilingual nation, uh, so we have Nordics, we have a lot of German speakers because it's a very popular language to study in school. So uh, I don't know, 60, 70 percent of students take it, you know, uh, on top of English. So uh, lots of companies like, you know, Booking.com and many others kind of settle for, for that function in particular over here in Lithuania. And it accounts for around, you know, uh, around a quarter of total employment in the industry over here. The third most important part would be finance and accounting. So again, everything from simple APR to FPNA functions uh, growing now uh, within, you know, finance and accounting area over here in Lithuania. So it's a little bit below uh, 20%. And the rest uh, would be kind of a mix of those, maybe not as labor intense, but maybe more high-end functions, things like, you know, big data analytics, marketing, robotics is very, very much on the growth uh, over here in Lithuania in all kind of functional scopes as well. So these would be three, three main uh, kind of areas. And I would also want to maybe point out that uh, due to the fact that we have very strong representation from finance industry in particular, not only from the from the north, but also uh, guys like uh, Western Union, NASDAQ is over here. So uh, compliance and uh, KYC and AML functions is also very much on the growth. It's very much true for, for you no know, global economy, but uh, also over here in Lithuania. 
Jesus, I'd love uh, our students in Poland to encourage them to study German uh, on the level as you have it, because I, I fully agree that now the demand for the German speakers is growing every year. Uh, actually, German business was already communicating it like a decade ago that they will be opening much more for outsourcing or shared services, modern functions within the, uh, within the near shoring um, uh, destinations. But Poland somehow missed it and we still uh, miss a lot of quality when it comes to the German uh, speakers and I hope it will change because there is a big big potential in that um, in that market and the other thing which you mentioned cyber security I guess this is very uh, interesting because now like we are Okay, let's say we are already familiar with the whole pandemia issue uh, all around us, but that forced a lot of businesses to work from home, but that created a lot of cybersecurity issues. So this is like a target for the future. And I, I think this is really good that uh, already you have um, it identified that this is a group of processes um, uh, which, uh, which the uh, operation centers are taking care of. But uh, let's maybe move to the area of human, of people who, who work. Okay, you mentioned there is more or less 21,000 people working in the industry uh, already. Uh, but do you calculate somehow what is the average size of the operation center? Um, how, uh, how many languages are being used in the um, operational modern model? Some kind of that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have that kind of that we like to call, you know, uh, the average uh, center over here in Lithuania. So when it comes to size, uh, we do have, you know, a couple of really, really large players like Danske Bank with 4000 people or Western Union with 2000 people. But kind of the the average size of the center is around 250. So it's kind of a well sized, mid sized center, I would say, for for the industry. Uh, now, when it comes to employees themselves, average age is, I think, very much close to what we see in Hungary and Poland, so around 30 years, so uh, that kind of, you know, generation that is very uh, tech savvy, but, you know, uh, that raises some brows in terms of, you know, uh, their, their working style and so on, so it's, it's very much we have the same situation over here. Now, when it comes to languages, uh, again, especially if we look at those centers uh, that have more focus on customer operations or uh, global focus, we see that, you know, they provide services in 10, 15 languages. Western Union, for example, has 35 languages represented in their center. So all the typical Western European languages, but also they have, you know, those smaller teams of, you know, more exotic languages like Arabic or Mandarin in their center. Uh, uh, on average, the center performs in, in four to five languages. This would be kind of the, the typical area. I think it's also good to mention that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've got more or less 50% male and 50% female who work in the GBS industry. Yeah, very much correct. So uh, overall, in terms of employment, we have pretty much 50-50 split. But what's, I think, even... Uh, more important, it was very, very um, fascinating for us to discover that, you know, this kind of representation goes to the very top uh, level of the center. So in terms of, you know, senior management, we have also pretty much 50-50 uh, representation. And uh, we even checked, you know, the actual heads of centers. So I think the split is there 45 to, you know, 55. So again, very, very good representation. And I think that's a very a uh, high mark to hit not only for you know other countries but also for other industries over here in Lithuania so we've been, we've been very you know pleasantly surprised by that having relatively young let's say population working in the um, BPO BSS um, industry means that most of them are fresh graduates of the local universities or all the schools are there any specific programs uh, run within the universities uh, when it comes to the cooperation between the BSS industry and the and these educational institutions? Mm -hmm. So I have, uh, I guess we have, you know, a couple of channels how companies typically do that. They're 
some centers that uh, you know have developed a direct relationship with some of the universities that have you know kind of uh, programs that are most suitable to them as an employer. So, you know, centers that have engineering services within uh, them, you know typically cooperate with technical universities, you know, buying out of research or doing, you know, some uh, graduate programs together, but also uh, invest Lithuania as an organization. So if, if you remember uh, in the beginning, I mentioned that we have half organization working with investment attraction. So the half organization, another 50 people are what we call our PMO office. So the guys that actually do all the hard work and uh, ensure that the investment environment is, you know, to the level that our investors need and we have a separate group that works only with education so whenever a new company comes into lithuania we sit down and we talk you know uh within the whole uh you know education area uh, which universities uh are the ones for you to reach out you know what kind of programs do you want to look into do you need to sit down with the deans and look through the curriculum to change maybe some particular module so uh, we help to introduce things like, you know, gap standard to some universities that do financial work because for American companies that was very important. That was not very popular, you know, a couple of years back in Lithuania. The same was with, for example, mainframe program. When Barclays came into Lithuania, there were pretty much no mainframe uh, specialists. So we sit down with Vilnius University, you know, we looked at, you know, how we could make this happen. The company provided lectures because they were you no know, technical experts within the field and university provided, you know, kind of marketing and student attraction to that particular module. And now we have this whole separate population of mainframe specialists in Lithuania, which is, uh, you know, a very, very special thing within, you know, IT field. And this is how we typically cooperate. Uh, as I mentioned, these are those companies that, you know, already know what they want to do so they can uh, work with the university directly or we work as that kind of bridge to find those relationships that they need, you know, and making sure that it's, it's a uh, mutually beneficial relationship. And are the universities open for such, um, let's say, cooperation or modification of the programs they, they already have? Yeah, yeah, I would say absolutely. I think uh, especially now uh, after Lithuania joined European Union, universities were forced to compete on kind of a more global scale than they uh, used to before. So now they not only have to provide all the you know, theoretical knowledge, you know, all the you know books and lectures, but they need to provide that crucial you know experience part as well for the students so that they would be able to come into the labor market already ready to work. And I think that is already very much in the minds of people that go into universities in Lithuania. They want to go to those universities that will have, you know, the best internship programs, cooperation with universities in terms of, you know, may, uh, some sort of semester uh, projects and so on. So as the universities were forced to kind of compete on that practical level, they're very much, you know, it's within their interest to find those well-known uh, international brands and companies with interesting functions that relate to their curricular to offer that opportunity to their potential students just to kind of attract them to you know, universities. So they're very, very much open. As I mentioned, we have this example with Mainframe. Our colleagues from manufacturing team also created a separate um, program for aviation, for example. So there's so much that we can, I think, still do and improve within uh, education system. And we definitely uh, feel that universities see private companies and especially those international companies would know a lot of experience as a vital par partner to, to this journey. Okay. Uh, besides people, the, this industry, especially this industry needs modern office spaces so and and this is sometimes a challenge for various uh, cities and countries to um, have the av availability of the correct good ones uh, um, office spaces for this industry how this area has changed within the last years and how what is the offer when it comes to the modern buildings uh, in lithuania for for the purposes of uh, bss industry yeah i think uh 
especially maybe over the last half of a decade, it's been a huge change in terms of mindset of developers over here in Lithuania. So we have a couple of strong Lithuanian developers, but also you know, a couple of Nordic ones represented. So when the, especially GBS and ICT industry started really, really to grow, uh, they definitely felt that there was that particular demand from international companies. They had a very strong standard of how their office space has to look, you know, where it has to be within the city, what kind of connectivity, uh, you know, infrastructure they want to even see around the campus, for example. And they really responded well to uh, to that kind of uh, a new bar that was raised for them in particular. So. Uh, in Vilnius, we do have a lot of new office space. Uh, uh, if you were, I think, in Lithuania in 2016, 2017, right, from, for one of our GBS uh, community gatherings, I believe so. So uh, you would uh, already coming uh, here a couple of years from then, you would see a huge change within how Vilnius looks like, especially our business district, which is you know, uh, on, uh, on a lovely place on the bank of a river, uh, you know, I, even like on the other side of the window over here, I can already see five cranes working on on that area in particular. So it's been a it's been a huge boom. Uh, things like you know Bream and Lean are pretty much uh, you know standard uh, certifications for office space to have as well. When it comes to Colonus, again, especially five years ago, this was a huge problem. We have, you know, even lost a couple of projects due to the fact that, you know, there was just no uh, significant supply of, you know, that good quality of space. But again, uh, I think uh, brokers and developers saw a huge opportunity for, for this development. So there is, you know, a plenty of, you know, various kind of office space, more Nordic style or, you know, more kind of American uh, to choose from. I think this was a challenge for a lot of um, countries and cities. We we had similar uh, thing in Poland that uh, the big cities, OK, they had the good quality and good quantity of the available office space. But the smaller guys were waiting for the investor to create an office space when it were completely different way. So you had to have a good office space yeah. to encourage investor to come and so so yes i fully agree that this is something what uh, changed europe actually the whole europe um, uh, and now this approach is a little bit different and i hope that after this pandemic we will come back to our offices because they uh, they look amazing it's a good place to meet people and and to spend some time uh, working on very interesting projects but uh, I have left something for the last part of our conversation, and this is actually the area of yours, which is the Invest Lithuania. When the GBS, new GBS, is interested in coming to Lithuania, how usually the process looks like if you if somebody is knocking to your door? How does it look mm -hmm. like? Yeah, so I think the first and foremost where uh, how we typically start our relationship with new companies is, you know, uh, very much through data. So in, in Lithuania, I think we're one of the kind of typical sources when companies look for, you know, that information on functional scope, on, you know, other major GPS centers, you know, even for particular uh, wages, for particular functions. We are uh, the body that kind of collects and condenses all this information. And, you know, when the company needs something to put within their business case for the initial try, we're typically uh, the team that provides this information. Afterwards, uh, of course, uh, there is uh, a very uh, important element of, you know, visiting the country. So we provide everything that is needed in terms of agenda itself. So we're very much in contact with most of the centers over here. So we can, you know, find the right kind of peer company for you to talk to. So if you are American from finance industry, we can uh, we can find a company that's already be already been through this journey and settled it in Lithuania and can tell you not only uh, lovely marketing stuff, you know, that we have on hand, but also know the really gritty uh, things, you know, lessons learned and what they would have done differently and so on. And this is, you know, uh, invaluable kind of contents to have, even if, for example, you don't really land in the country, if there's so much to learn from these companies that have already been through the journey. Now, uh, there is also that portion of, you know, financial support. We provide, a, a, you know, quite a menu of different financial support 
programs for potential investors. So it can range anything from, you know, financial support for, for creation of uh, new jobs in the country. We have a separate program for trainings, which is, you know, important if you're just starting off this journey. Uh, we have another couple of that uh, we are now in the making. So uh, one is requalification, especially in those kind of more niche IT areas. This could be, you know, big data analytics or specific cybersecurity profile that the companies might, might be looking into. Again, covering all the expenses um, uh, related to that. And also uh, a new program for RP development or robotic process automation or intelligent process automation, rather. So anything we know from licenses to, uh, you know, courses, to consultants uh, fees, for example. So it's pretty much, you know, covers the, the whole journey from, you know, initial setup of the center to, you know, what you would need to add those uh, high-end functions on top of that. And so this is the initial kind of part where investors are still looking to land into Lithuania. And if we are, you know, kind of successful, you know, we get the lovely, you know, PR message that the company is over here. We are, we definitely strive to be a very active partner in, you know, that second part of the journey uh, when the investor is already here. So uh, during the first kind of initial months, we help a lot with uh, marketing, especially to kind of key audiences. So maybe those, you know, from 25 to 35, which would be your uh, key demographic for potential employees. So we have a very strong a uh, team that is focusing on digital marketing and social media so we can you know craft messages or help them you know kind of create uh, their following here uh, we can help you know to arrange maybe interview with leading uh, media outlets over here just kind of to raise the profile make sure that everybody who needs to know that the company is over here and doing that particular function they kind of get that message so that you know CVs uh, start um, getting in we can you know, provide information about partners over here. This could be anything from you know, HR agencies that have experience in this particular area, you know, brokers that you know, knows office space in and out, as well as you know, as, as we already kind of talked about universities and education space. You know, who would be the deans you know, to talk in, in Berlinus Konus Klaipeda or you know, outside the cities as well. And Afterwards, we kind of employ, so to say, our investors to kind of advise us back you know, on what we need to do more for them to be successful. So this could be anything that they could say that they need more flights to, let's say, Germany on different times or uh, to London. If they need something change within the labor code, uh, if they need something change within migration processes over here. Uh, or pretty much, you know, any other area within what's within the, you know, the government's portfolio that we can kind of reach into those particular ministries or other administrating bodies, talk to them and see what we can change. So we kind of really look for that active participation within the kind of creation of investment environment from the investors part as well. And uh, are those investors, um, let's say, so open to communicate those um, changes they would uh, require, like you mentioned, even finding out the new flight connections. Is it really happening? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, especially we're, uh, when it comes to GBS, we're kind of in a very, um, in very good position is that we uh, were with most of the companies that came to Lithuania over the last decade. So, you know, I work in, in West Lithuania for, you know, uh, six years. We have colleagues who work with the GBS, you know, for seven, eight years as well. So we kind of know all the management. We uh, kind of communicated with the teams that were selecting the location and we you know do what what is uh, in our power to kind of maintain that relationship. And uh, I think that investors really see the benefit in, in them being open and telling us, giving us their feedback, you know, what they would like uh, to happen within the, uh, within the investment environment. And they're pretty, pretty happy to provide us with that feedback. And, you know, I think we already shown that we can be quite effective in terms of, you know, enacting those change. And when you, you see that, you know, something is, is happening, it's easy to kind of uh, give your time for the, that additional change and, you know, bother yourself a little bit to kind of provide that additional data that we need to uh, enact, you know, even further changes. And are there, a completely different question, are there any challenges for the industry, uh, for the GBS industry currently in Lithuania? 
Um, is there anything what might be described as a challenge for, for this industry? Mm -hmm. So again, it's I think very much, uh, it really depends from company to company. So especially maybe three, four, five years ago, a very important challenge that we had was uh, the mid-management layer within the centers. So obvi obviously just because the industry hasn't been in Lithuania for that long, we did not have as much time to kind of grow that mid-management layer where who would know how to, you know, uh, build the center itself or, you know, how to um, enact the, you know, transaction of processes from other countries and so on. So all those kind of bits and pieces that you need to know uh, when, you know, building a new center. So, yeah, uh, maybe some three, five years ago, that was a, a huge challenge. Obviously, with the kind of explosion of growth over here, uh, th this has eased a lot over the last couple of years, I would say. Uh, another um, a ch I would say a challenge or maybe an area which companies really need to maybe think about or look into would be sometimes particular language skill sets. So it's it's both a, a blessing and also kind of a, a con when you are known as multilingual population because you know companies expect that you know you know French German of course but we'll have also a huge team of Czech speakers or Hungarian speakers and uh, I bet you uh, know yourself very much that especially when it comes to let's say Eastern European languages we don't really there's not that much intermix between the countries here. So sometimes it's harder to find let's say, uh, Hungarian speakers in Lithuania than, uh, I don't know, Italian or uh, Spanish native speakers over here. So sometimes that is kind of uh, maybe area where companies don't really pay enough attention to maybe think of how this transition would work. Perhaps we can uh, have uh, some guys from those locations to relocate over here rather than finding absolutely new talent. So it might not be as huge of a, a challenge, but maybe an area where companies kind of lack a little bit of attention uh, in, in this area. Okay, so now last but not least, a small um, view to the future. How do you expect the um, next era of GBS in uh, Lithuania? Do you expect that uh, it will be a stable growth as it was so far? Or perhaps there are some new things which are already on the horizon? Yeah, so I guess one of the factors here would be RPA, as, as we kind of already talked about. And I think it's it's something that a lot of, you know, locations are generally thinking about and lots of companies are thinking about whether, you know, perhaps the actual growth of employees in their central will either slow down or will remain the same, though the workload that it's going to put upon itself is going to grow. But no RPA will help to kind of uh, sh shoulder that burden. So, um it's 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 really still hard to tell. I think over the next couple of years we will not see a major impact in terms of slowing down on employment, but maybe five years ahead, uh, this will definitely enable a lot of people to ship from more transactional processes to those high end that might not just generally need uh, you know that much employment. So it will be very interesting to see. Uh, how, uh, you know, the industry handle that in the future. But, you know, with the fact that, you know, we are, as an organization are even creating financial support programs for, you know, additional, in fact, um, creation of additional uh, RP programs within the centers, we are generally pretty optimistic regarding this in the future. Uh, Another uh, huge trend, uh, I think, uh, will also be a, a um, I don't know how to say, maybe digitalization or globalization of, you know, the attitude towards the customer. So if it was more uh, regional, we feel that a lot of companies are uh, becoming more and more adventurous in terms of, you know, what kind of regions they want to cover, what kind of you new know, uh, channels they want to provide from the center and digital is the area where there's so much more growth. Obviously, the pandemic had, I think, a strong impact with a lot of companies shifting from, you know, those brick and mortar kind of setup to more digital channels. And that will very much, I think, be reflected in GBS industry as well. We, you know, all the digital and the supporting functions growing in that area in particular. 
Thank you very much. I guess this is very, very nice view of the future and it is in line of the of this how the whole industry around the globe is changing so it's moving into this digitalization it's moving into rpa this rpa is changing again it's getting more advanced there is more artificial intelligence which is connected to that okay i guess that we could talk and talk like that but unfortunately we need to go to the end and my last question is uh, which might be very valuable for our listeners and viewers can you say how to reach you, how to reach Invest Lithuania and where to look if anyone wants to have more information about uh, GBS industry in Lithuania? So a couple of main ways to reach us. First uh, would be through our web page, which is investlithuania.com. Uh, you can find the contact form there if you are interested in particular in GBS industry. Also, we know all of the information about you know, success stories who is already over here. Information about labor pool is also there if you know, the companies would like to explore. Also, you will find the actual you know, uh, digital copy of the report there and you can download it from our web page as well. Uh, another uh, area would be to reach us through LinkedIn. Uh, again, in West Lithuania and our uh, global business services has even its uh, own uh, show page. So you can definitely go ahead and kind of, if you want to you specifically find more information in the uh, kind of social media space about that, you can definitely find it there and um, yeah, reach us through LinkedIn or uh, through our web page. Um, this would be the two best ways, I would say. Okay, so this what I will do is that after our call, uh, this is going to be presented as a, let's say a little bit moderated uh, show later on. So we will add some additional slides and data and to the description of our talk, I will uh, attach those links which you just mentioned. So it should help our uh, readers and viewers to find you in much easier way. Laura, it was um, a big um, um, a big moment for me to talk to you, to have this international speech about the GBS status in Lithuania. So thank you very much for your time. And I hope to see you soon, not necessarily via video, but in person. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Victor, you know, for inviting me on your podcast and generally for creating this uh, very much engaging uh, content for the GBS community. I think there will be a lot of people who will enjoy it. Thank you very much and talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.